Hi everyone, I'm Chris and I am taking a look here at a Gen 4 SSD. So we have the new versions of the NVMe drives out now and this is one that was sent out to me from Sabrent. It's the Rocket Q4. Now my motherboard I just recently upgraded to a Gen 4 supporting motherboard, so NVMe 4 spec. And you do really need that to take advantage of the speeds that you can get out of this drive, the maximum speeds. It is backwards compatible with Gen 3, but Gen 4 is what we want. So the Rocket Q4 does offer up to read speeds of 4,600 megabytes per second and a claim of sequential writes of up to 3,600. So not quite as fast as their top tier, top end model, which is the Rocket 4 Plus. However, for the two terabyte model, it is quite a bit cheaper. First up, let's take a look at the packaging. So this one, of course, comes with the heatsink. There's another one they do sell that doesn't. If you have a laptop, for example, and you just don't need it, or your motherboard, like my motherboard, actually has a heatsink on it, then you could probably get away with it. Of course, the heatsink is needed to keep that performance up. Otherwise, it will run into thermal throttling. So you can see here on the side, all of the features. So PCI 4 motherboard is required if you want to get the highest speeds out of this. If you're using a PCIe, 3.0 motherboard, then you will max out with your reads and writes about 3,300 uh, instead of about 4,800 on the read sequential using PCIe 4 with this one. So a little bit of information there on the heatsink on the back, top spreader, the copper heat coils, and aluminium aluminum heatsink, thermal tape, so it's a thermal pad that connects, is on top of the SSD, and screws and everything in it. So this is the two gigabyte version here that Sabrent did send out to me in exchange for this video you are watching. So everything just slots out of the side here. There is our SSD. So you get a Cronus as well if you needed software to clone over your existing drive to this new one, and that is included. And here is the heatsink assembly, which I will show you now. So it does come well packaged up. There's an installation guide here for us. And we have all the screws laid out, which is good. And even a little screwdriver too. So you don't even need to supply one. They've got everything we need. And here is that heatsink. So this feels actually quite heavy, which is good. It's a nice chunky heatsink. In fact, really good thermal solution here that they have for an SSD. So where the SSD goes is just under here. You can see that this is one of the uh, included here thermal pads. There's another one right here too. And of course you need to remove that plastic on them so it has good contact with it. And then it is going to screw down in place uh, applying a bit of pressure on top of that SSD. And as mentioned, like this is really chunky, very, very good looking cooling solution here to stop or cut down on that thermal throttling. And now the Rocket Q4 NVMe 4.0 drive. This comes in a metal case here to protect it in transit, so that's good. And there is just an installation guide for that as well right here. And here is that Rocket Q4. So we'll take a quick look at the design of this. So this on the top here is a label, of course, but it's actually got copper in it. Okay, just like the other ones I've reviewed, the drives from Sabrent, so that also does act as a bit of a heatsink as well for that. So this is just a, well, it's actually double-sided too, SSD, as you can see. So they've got their chips, flash chips, NAD flash, the controller on both sides of this. So that means the thickness of it is a little bit thicker than normal. So you may have, depending on what laptop, if you are installing this into a laptop that does support PCIe 4.0, that you may have to press it down a little bit and apply a bit of pressure there, but I haven't had any issues with the other thicker ones I've reviewed in the channel. And my test PC for this SSD is a motherboard that does support PCIe 4, of course. This is the Mag X570 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard, and I am running an AMD Ryzen 9. This is the 5950X, overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. So this is what the SSD looks like when you have the heatsink on it. So it is covering the top, of course, and the underside, which my motherboard does not do. So it will still slot in just fine. And using the screw that Sabrent supply in the box, I'm able to screw this all in. It's gonna be a little bit tight in my case with the motherboard that I have with this, but it should do a good job of keeping this SSD nice and cool when under load. So I managed to fit it in there all right, a little bit tight with my PC here because I don't have a lot of room to work with. But it goes in fine, there is the space there for the screw and where it slots into the motherboard wasn't too much of an issue there for me. I did have a little bit of a trouble getting the screw in 
And that was mainly because my motherboard has like a little rubber pad in the middle there where the SSDs are to give them some support. And that was in the way a bit. So I had to push down and then screw it in. So now it is set and let's test out the speeds of it and the performance now with a few benchmarks. Now, if you jump onto the internet and take a look at the webpage for the Sabrent Rocket Q4 here, you can see a little bit of information about it. So it supports smart trim commands, supports on Fi 2.3 up to 4.0 interface, advanced wear leveling, everything that all the other SSDs from the big brands all have there. And that is to be expected, of course. So when you take a look at their claims here, with the QLC NAT flash memory, the peak performance speeds with our sequential reads should be 4,800 megabytes per second and then 3,600 megabytes per second for writes. That, of course, is when using PCIe Gen 4 motherboards, which I am using right here. If it is stuck at Gen 3, so using an older motherboard, then you're looking at a maximum now 3,300 with it. So let's take a look here at what we're getting with the speeds and benchmarks, but first up, there's software too. I want to mention this. They do have a software you can download, and that is for the firmware updates. You can check on the drive health and just a few other things there, but let's look at those benchmarks now. So according to which benchmark you're looking at, we're either going to be exceeding the manufacturer's claims or falling behind a little bit. So with ATTO disk benchmark here, you can get sequential writes of 3,401, 4,010, and then well over 5,000 megabytes per second with our sequential read. So that is excellent. That's going over their claim. And then AS SSD benchmark, it falls behind a little bit with this one, as you can see, with the sequential reads and writes. Just going over 4,000 here, and the writes are a little bit slower than you would expect. And there is the score there too as well. So these applications, these benchmarks, you can download these yourself and benchmark your own drive to compare the performance if you wanted to do that. And the one that I trust the most and use the most is Crystal Disk Mark. And we're getting really good speeds with this. So almost up to a maximum peak here of 5,000 megabytes per second and 3,745 with our writes sequential. Very, very good there. Now the temperatures of the drive. I have been monitoring this while it has been in use. Very good. See, as I scroll up here, this is it right here, the Sabrent Rocket Q4, 50 degrees Celsius maximum, thanks to that very big heat sink that is in there. Minimum temperatures of just 38 degrees Celsius there as well. This is another drive I have installed PCIe for as well in here. Now, if it didn't have the heat sink on it, it would probably get up to 65, 70 degrees and run into thermal throttling. But right now, that's not going to happen. So the last test I'm going to do here is just to copy over a lot of files from my C drive, which is another PCIe 4 drive. That's the Western Digital one. Okay, so 21 gigabytes, almost 22 gigabytes right there. And I'm going to move it over to the Sabrent Q4 right here. So just paste this over. And you can see blazing fast transfer speeds with these files, 3.2 gigabits per second. But I'm going to continue. Just keep going until we reach the limit of the cache on here. So this I'll just call test two, another folder, and we'll hit paste again. And the performance you can see now, once we have maxed out the cache there, the speeds will drop. Then it will sometimes pick back up again. There you go, as you can see, finishing up, picks up. And that is normal. That happens with my Samsung drive. It happens with that Western Digital. All of them do this. Once they have used up that cache there, you're going to run into that. And I'll just do one more. And we'll see if it's going to get any slower, but it should pick up. And these speeds, they are very, very fast here. So let's just paste this in there again. And just over 3 gigabits per second, but dropping down again to about 800 megabytes per second, just over. And that hasn't picked back up again. But again, this is normal. So there we go, this is a very fast SSD. It does surpass the likes of my Samsung 970 EVO Plus with the sequential reads and writes. That one, as you saw, getting some very good figures. Of course, it's not the fastest when it comes to PCI 4.0 spec 
NVMe drives. If you want way better, you want the absolute top tier performance, then of course you do need to pay a bit more extra and you can get the likes of the Rocket 4 Plus, which is a lot quicker. That one can get up to about 7,000 in the read, 7,000 megabytes per second reads and writes uh, well over 6,000 too as well with the sequential write speed. So if that is more of what you're after, then of course, and budget's not a problem, that would be the one to go for. But still the Rocket Q4, great drive here. And I'm looking forward to just using this continually now in my PC with the, of course, PCIe 4 spec motherboard. So thank you so much for watching this video here and I do hope to see you back in my up and coming future videos.